brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop At deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman new to our panel, but not new to picture fans, because you admired him for many years in pictures. But he is now making his debut in Two for the Seesaw, the big Broadway hit, and so is he, Mr. Dana Andrews. And I have the pleasure of introducing that illustrious lady of the fourth estate, the chic and charming Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And I have the pleasure of introducing our publisher panelist, who is also a columnist for This Week magazine, Bennett Cerf. And as usual, it's my honor to introduce our superb news moderator, vice president of ABC, and the man who runs this show, a gentleman of the old school, I mean the Tilton School in New Hampshire, John <laughs> Charles Davis. <laughs> Thank you, Bennett, and Tilton thanks you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And nice to have you here with us in the theater and before your television sets at home for What's My Line. We're up to our old tricks. We're trying to puzzle the panel with occupations, and we think we'll have some success tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just... Now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there, please, sir. Henri Lamotte. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Just for fun, uh, are you called Henry or Henri? Henry. Henry, mostly. All right, well, then, if you don't mind, we'll use Henry. And will you tell us where you're from? From New York and New Jersey. From New York and New Jersey. Keep running back and forth all Happy the time. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I won't go into the reasons why. Mr. Lamarth, will you meet the panel? Panel, Mr. Lamarth, and join me over here, please, sir. Are you familiar with the way we keep score? I'm very familiar. All right, then let's let everybody at home and our friends in the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. Mr. Lamoth is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Lamoth, does the fact that you uh, have residence in both New Jersey and New York have any effect whatsoever on your job? No. That's one down and nine to right. go, Mr. Andrews. Uh, Mr. Lamoth, do you deal in services or services? Yes. Yes. Deals in services. <laughs> But do you, do you work for a profit-making concern? Self-employed. Self do, you, do your services, uh, do, you, do people come to you for your services? Yes. Do, do you have uh, an office? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, could men and women both enjoy your services? Yes. Uh, could anyone on this panel ever have used your services? Anyone on this panel? Yes, mm -hmm. you could have. Could have, yes. Mm -hmm. Could be. Mm -hmm. uh, could we use them in New York without yes. going to New Jersey? Yes. You have such a lovely tan. Do you work indoors? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Well, can you do your work out of doors, too? Yes. Uh, 
has your work anything to do with anything that grows or ever has grown? No. I think on this particular occasion we can say no. That's right. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Stirp. Mr. Lamont, does the work that you do require special training? No. Well, I would say here, if Mr. Lamont will allow me, <laughs> but I would think that there is a degree of training necessary. I would suggest, for instance, Bennett, that if you were to try to perform the same service, I want to be there. I mean, uh, you'd need a little... <laughs> You'd need, uh, you'd need some training Yes, but you kind. do not need a special degree from a college right. or university. That's right. It's not an academic correct. training necessarily of the higher degree type, but there is an, a, a degree of training, I think, that would be required. Well, being crazy helps. Yeah, being crazy helps. Being crazy helps? <laughs> really? Uh, Miss Lamont, that remark makes me ask if you have anything to do with the entertainment business. <laughs> yes. You have. Do you... Uh, exhibit your talents for uh, audiences? Yes. Do you perform? You, uh, you've already said you work sometimes indoors and sometimes outdoors. Yeah. Could you do your service at a carnival or circus? Could be. Uh, would that service be performed in the, uh, pardon me, in the carnival of queer people and strange... Uh, I hesitate to use the word freak, but I, uh... Would, would you... Is that where you would be found in sideshow? Sideshow, yes. Well, no. Might you be found in the sideshow? No, that's fine. No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> uh... <laughs> do you... Do you wear a costume uh, in your work, Mr. Lamont? Could be, sometimes. If you did, did wear a costume, would it be one immediately recognizable to me if I were to see you in it? Would it... I then know what you would do in it? No. 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 There, I mean, if he were to wear a costume specifically, there, it would not necessarily identify what he was about yes. to do. That makes Very it five right. down, five to go, Mr. Andrews. Uh, Mr. Lamar, do you work alone? Yes. Do you work... Uh, before an audience. Yes, that has been elicited. Mm -hmm. uh, is this audience in a theater necessarily? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you go through any sort of motion, or is there any movement involved in what you do? Any what? Any movement involved in what you do? I mean, uh... Yeah. I mean, do you move well, I mean, do you move about? Is there any movement uh, on your part necessary to achieve the service which you are delivering to pro bono yeah. publico? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there any movement involved which is not caused by you yourself, but rather by some mechanism? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Oh, Mr. Lamont, do you have to have a certain physical dexterity, you do something with your hands that requires some special skill. Do you do something with your hands, hands that or requires feet. some special skill? Or hands feet? Or feet? No. Doesn't knit with his feet. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. His skill is all in his head. He doesn't need any special dexterity in his hands and feet, but he can move. Not necessarily on his head or anything like that, but he can move in his yes, job, right? Yes, he can move, yeah. Are people amused by watching you perform? By, do you mean this amused ha-ha or amused uh, my uh, gosh? Uh, what do you mean? Are they entertained by his dexterity, whatever it yes, is? Yes, nice recovery, Miss Francis. They are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you appear in a rodeo? No. That would make it nine down and one to go, well, Mr. Andrews. Off. We just discussed this for a minute, John. You may have 15 seconds for a conference. Uh, if, he, if he doesn't use his hands and he can appear in a circus or a carnival, and he doesn't he appear in the sideshow, he, like he might be uh, uh, the manager, the circus manager or something like somebody you know. Who no, but he is a performer. He's a, so he'd have to be a barker. We didn't establish whether he worked with animals, did we? we never no, he doesn't work with anything that was ever growing. The 25 seconds that were 15 are up. And he obviously isn't shot out of a Mr. Cannon. Andrews, do you, uh, during your 
act or whatever it is, do you talk? No. Couldn't if he wanted to. He's a high diver. He dives 40 feet into two feet of water. <laughs> Are you suggesting that a diver doesn't use his hands and feet? No. I use special my, dexterity. I use my stomach. Special talent. He uses he's a flat diver. Actually, if you just said does he use his stomach muscles, I'd have been with you 100%. Because Mr. Lamoth is a flat diver. He lands in two feet of water on his estomac. When he was a younger man, he used to land in a damp sponge. But you know how it is. It's the <laughs> years catch up with him. I don't like the plastic sponges nowadays. No, no that's it. They don't hold Although enough they have water. To jump off. Yes, Dorothy, you have no, a question? No, I take it all back. I was, I was just asking a question, and you would have been able to answer it. <laughs> what, is, what do you do for an encore, Mr. McMahon? That's my line. Nice to have you with us. Well, panel, we managed to stick you the first time. Let's see if we can't do it again. Will our second challenger come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Cecilia? <laughs> Neville. Is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. It's Neville? It's Mrs. It's Mrs. Neville. Yes. And where are you from, Mrs. Neville? Lafayette, Indiana. Lafayette, Indiana. Yes. Oh! We have I, a lot of, I'm sure, Elks from Indiana with us tonight. Oh, They're yes. having their, I think, 96th convention in New York City, and I know we have a lot of Elks with us, and welcome, by the way. Oh, so, Mrs. Uh, and that's 50 more Elks than I thought we had with us. Mrs. Neville, the panel. Panel, Mrs. Neville, will you come and join me, please? Uh, tell me, Mrs. Neville, do you know how we keep score? Yes, thank you. Oh, fine. Then we can let everybody at home and here in the theater, except my friends in the panel, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Mrs. Neville is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Mrs. Neville, one of the great colleges of the country is located in Lafayette, Indiana, Purdue. Oh, yes. Have you got anything whatever to do with Purdue? No, I do not. Well, well, I don't. What <laughs> <time to go? laughs> However, the boys in Purdue wish that she did. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. Uh, is there a service connected with what you do, yes. Miss Neville? Yes. And uh, do you uh, give this service to both men and women? Yes. Uh, do they come to you? Uh, yes. Is there any um, product at all whatsoever required in what you do? Yes. Is it a useful product? Yes, very. Uh, would I want it? Yes. <laughs> Have I got it? <laughs> me, That's a terrible me... question. Now, this gets into an area that is so generalized that it's very difficult for Mrs. Neville to be specific in answering the questions right. that you put down. We would suggest that the product is useful, certainly, and that under certain circumstances you would admire to have uh, possession of same. Yes, thank you, John. <laughs> if I did have it, would it show? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much depend on what you were doing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this, if Mrs. Neville will permit. If you did have it, and you uh, decided that you wished to uh, it. <laughs> make use of it publicly, it is most likely it would show. Wouldn't you agree? Uh-huh. Well, is it something that one could have any season of the year? Yes. Is it something I could hold in my hand? No. Not the ones... You mean your little old hands? Not the ones I've seen lately, no, how thin. The same hands you had before? These are just my same little old cotton no, picking that's hands. Two down and eight to go, Mr. <laughs> Andrews. Uh, is this product, would you say it's a decorative product? <laughs> Uh, yes. Now, wait a minute. I have a 
assuming here, because we don't want to, to mislead you, Dana, that you are speaking here of a product which would have as its principal purpose decoration of the person or a scene or something like that. But it is decorated. You're Incidentally. E you're evading tangentially. me. Tangentially. You're evading me. Carry on. Just so long as you understand that the purpose of this product, I think Mrs. Neville would want me to be this fair, the purpose mm. of this product is not to be decorative necessarily. I think. Well, Miss Francis said that you, had, that you were in a service and also there was a product involved. Do you have anything to do with the making of the product? <laughs> That's no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. While Arlene was asking the questions up till the last question, I thought it was money. But you said but she so couldn't hold, hold it in her hand. hand yeah. I can tell you. Never. Uh, not for long. Never. Not for long. Uh, is this something which, in use, at some place, touches the floor? Touches what? The touches floor. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Does it have any legs? Yes. Does it make any sound? Yes. Could. Do you help? it make any sound? <laughs> Four thousand six to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mrs. Neville, is this uh, thing alive when you're using it? Yes. Has it got uh, <laughs> as many as two legs? Yes. Has it got as many as four legs? Yes. Has it got only four legs? Yes. Well, you just tell me that. make it nice. Is it um, an animal that you would classify as domestic? Uh, yes. Is any part of this animal ever used uh, for everyday food? Yes. Uh, would it possibly be in the pig and or hog family? Yes. Indiana pigs. <laughs> uh, are you a pig lady? <laughs> huh? How did you punctuate that sentence? I mean, does she take... <laughs> Polite way, Mrs. I, I was being polite. I wouldn't dream of no pulling a thing like that. I mean, is you. <laughs> you remember in question? the whole Mills case, there was a pig lady yes. involved mm -hmm. because she took care of pigs. Do you, in some way, raise pigs? Well, I think to be fair, we must admit Mrs. Neville does raise pigs, but she's here in a more particular mm -hmm. classification mm -hmm. tonight. Have you got trained pigs by any chance? <laughs> You mean pigs that go choo 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 choo? Yeah, they can play. Well, there was once a pig could play "Home Sweet Home" on a, on a musical I had instrument. I a weenie. You no. did? Could we have a kind pigs of come out. That's what goes into. <laughs> All right, Dorothy, what is your weenie? Well, I just wondered if she was a hog caller. A hog caller? No, that will slip off. <laughs> Actually, I think you have it in substance. There was a special character to Mrs. Neville's appearance here tonight. She is one of the best known hog show judges in the country. She, she judges hogs. And I might say, I might say with all this prettiness that Mrs. Neville also judges ca in cattle shows and has recently been doing some cattle judging as well as hog judging. You but hog we, we judging once, is a special. On this show, we once had quite an argument over what the difference was between a pig and a hog. And uh, we got answers from people saying that a, a hog was a pig that weighed over 100 pounds. Is that right, Mrs. Neville? Well, it, that could be very true, actually, of course. You mean the, a pig uh, becomes a hog the minute it hits 100? Well, I would say more or less 200. 200 would be market weight, and then uh, would probably be classified as a hog. But actually, it's the same, pig and, and bet hog. And it, bet it's still underweight. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that kindly now, Bennett. Thank I you, meant that boy. kindly. Mrs. Neville, thank you very much. We puzzled the panel again on your precise uh, occupation. We had lots of fun. Oh, Hope you did, too. Uh, nice to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. And now we present the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends on the panel to put on their blindfolds. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please?
All right. Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. This is principally for Mr. Andrews, who may be unfamiliar with it. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with uh, Dana Andrews. Uh, I take it you're in the entertainment business. Well, rather, I think I am. Miss Kilgallen. What was that? I think he said yes. He said yes. Uh, are you known primarily for your work in motion pictures? No, no, not in motion pictures. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, have you ever distinguished yourself in some f kind of athletic endeavor? Not, not in public, really, no, not in public. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do you uh, perform in any musical way? Occasionally, yes, I do. Mr. Andrews, have you appeared on the Broadway stage? Oh, long, long time ago. Miss Kilgallen? Do you play a musical instrument? Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Sir? Uh, would you be known as the leader of some kind of a musical aggregation? Oh, uh, yes, I think I'm called a leader of an aggregation. Miss Francis? Is it possible that you might have appeared at the uh, Newport Jazz Festival? Well, you so-and-so. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. You did. You were keen. Let's have a conference, Shall I go Arlene? on? You were there. Yes, you might. Shall I take a guess? Sure, take a guess. Is it Benny Goodman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You I was there. Yeah. We get... I don't think I got my low, my voice low enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he did beautifully there. I yeah. thought he sounded like a Texas oil man there he, for a yeah, while. He didn't sound like a clarinet at all. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was harder than playing a clarinet, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most recently recorded history of your many, many comings and goings, all to the benefit of mankind and very often your nation, the Newport Jazz Festival. I think Arlene was there. Oh, I was, and you was were marvelous. You were just great, Benny. I didn't get a chance to tell you. But even more important, and I think it gives us a little opportunity, and I think the, the folks at home and, and you all here in the theater would be interested. I know, uh, Ben, that you went over to the Brussels Fair. In fact, you were just about the first of the show business people to go over to the Brussels Fair and took your gang over. And I would very much like to know what you think of, uh, one, the fair as a whole, and two, because I think this needs to be put in perspective, what you think of our pavilion over there. Well, John, I thought the fair was uh, magnificent as a whole. And uh, the theater, where we played, of course, it's a beautiful theater. I think it's one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. And uh, as far as the uh, exhibits into the th in the theater, I don't know. I don't think I'd be a good judge of that. Mm. I suppose, uh, depending upon what you wanted to show, there could be so many things we could show in America. And uh, I gather they uh, took the point of view that uh, they had so much to show, they wouldn't show them too much at all. <laughs> but as it, uh, how do you think of it comparatively, Ben? Because there's been a lot of, you know, turmoil about this. I believe that uh, the distinguished senator well, from New Hampshire on the occasion yeah. of a letter received from a constituent said we'd done an awful job. And yet, on the other hand, we read in the papers, and some people who've been over there think that it's a beautiful pavilion. How, what do you think of it? Do you think well, we've done well, or just medium, or we've done badly? Well, as I said, I think the uh, pavilion is uh, beautiful, and the theater is. I really think we could have used more imagination as far as what we showed there. Mm. No doubt about that. Well, that's, this uh, is what we were looking for, because I think it's something that we all ought to have some opinions on. Uh, and I trust you won't mind. I saw it a week before it opened, and I thought our pavilion was magnificent, and that the Russian pavilion was the kind of thing we could have done very easily if we hadn't used imagination, that we did use imagination. So there you are. Thank Thanks you. very much for being our guest. It's wonderful to have had you with us, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be back after this word from our sponsor. Fine evening. We gave the panel a very rough time of it, and that's always enjoyable. I must say, Dana Andrews, it's been nice to have you with us. And at the same time, it's a little bit sad to announce that Bennett Cerf is going to be missing for a couple of weeks. 
He's going to take his youngsters out to the Calgary Stampede and the Great Redwoods in California and down to Disneyland. And all this will do the youngsters, I'm sure, a great deal. And Bennett, a good deal more good than it does the youngsters. But we'll still <laughs> miss him. And on that happy note, until next week, this is John Dady saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. Good night, Dana. It was lovely to have you. Have a good, good time, Bennett. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Dana. It's lovely to see you. And John, I would like to say I agree with you completely about the fair. I think our pavilion is wonderful. The best Thank thing you. there. Good night, Bennett. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. Hope you all missed me a little. Good we night, will. John. Good night. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line. CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines.